previously in ring barrier controller. Um, if you recall, most traffic signals in North America operate under the ring barrier or uh, the uh, ring barrier module uh, and using the NEMA, uh, the, uh, the National Electric Manufacturing Association phasing convention. The idea is you'd be having two rings divided by a barrier. Any phase in left of the or in one side of the barrier cannot work with any phase in the other side of the barrier. And essentially what that means, one of the phases, or sorry, one of the sides of the barriers would be your north-south traffic, and the other one would be east-west. Within the actual barrier, within each side of the barrier, any two phases in the same ring cannot work together. Any two phases that are not in the same ring can work together. What that means, phase one can work with phase five or can work with phase six, but cannot work with phase two. Similarly, phase two cannot work with phase one, but can work with phases five and six. Based on this, we would be assigning our traffic movements. Typically, the left turns take the um, odd numbers. The convention is that the left turns take odd numbers and the uh, through phases and right turns to take the, uh, as long as they're permissive, take the even numbers. In this case, if we assign phase one to become the northbound left, that means the phase that cannot go with phase two is going to be the conflicting phase, which is phase, which is the southbound through. Phase one is a left turn, which is northbound left. Phase five will be the opposite left turn, which is southbound. You can rotate this as you wish. Depending on what means, what protected or protected permissive means is that uh, the protected portion of the phase operates with an arrow, so it's protected. It operates under a phase on its own. If the left turn exists but does not have a protected portion, it will operate under a solid green ball, if you recall the last couple of lectures. Any questions on ring barrier? Is, is, one, is anyone ha have any um, question on how ring barrier operates? We've discussed this multiple times. I want to make sure that everyone has a, a solid understanding of that because really this is how you end up building your uh, VSAM signal controllers. Okay, we'll be doing a couple of examples to make sure this, um, the uh, concept is, is there. Again, uh, a quick reminder, a protected phase is a phase that operates on its own and does not have any permissive conflicts. What permissive conflicts mean is the sort of conflict that you see with a green ball, for example. When you perform a right turn, you can perform a right turn while the pedestrian phase is open on the crosswalk, and in that case, you'll have to yield. If you're doing northbound right, the green, the solid green ball will come up while the pedestrian phase, the walk and flash and walk are operating. So pretty much you're doing a permissive turn. But if you have a dedicated phase, that means the you'll get an arrow for phase five, for example, in the southbound left, and phase five will work, but during the operation of phase five, the pedestrian here will not work. If the left turn here was operating under a solid ball, and I know I'm repeating myself so many times to make sure you guys are understanding the concept. If this is a solid ball, that means it's not phase five anymore. It's operating as phase two. And that means in the same fashion that a southbound ride will lead to a pedestrian when north-south is green, the same way, phase five will have to come into the middle of the intersection and check for both gaps in through traffic and pedestrians. The other thing that we covered is well, the difference between actuated, semi-actuated, and pre-timed. First, with pre-timed, you have dedicated phases or phase green times and that do not change. Every cycle, the signals are going to operate the same green time for every single phase. That's a pre-timed signal. It doesn't have to necessarily be the same, same sequence or the same uh, signal time plan during the day. What cities do, they operate pre-timed signals under different plans during the day. And what that means is during the AM peak, you'll have 
uh, every cycle, you'll have a dedicated green that does not change every single cycle during the AM peak for east, west, north, south, and so on and so forth. The dedicated green time can change in the PM. So every cycle in the PM operates with a specific green time that gets repeated every single cycle. There is no variation in green time, so whatever. A semi-actuated signal, and by the way, a pre-time signal means that there is no detection, zero detection. And this is why we operate pre-time, because we don't know what's, what's out there. Uh, this kind of system is really good when it comes to downtown and coordination, because it's really easy to coordinate signals, since you know that uh, phases are going to be always the same every single cycle, so you know you can coordinate all nearby signals accordingly. A semi-actuated signal happens when we have a major roadway. Let's say two and six here are the major roadway. We want to always guarantee a max time, a specific green time for every single through movement here. So what I can do, I can leave phases two and six without detection. If my left turn demand is not high, I can leave it even without detection. Um, but if uh, the demand is high and requires detection, you can still actuate or operate detectors in phases uh, two and five. But the main concept is really applied to through phases. Um, if phases two and six are the major, they exhibit high demands. I want to guarantee a specific time every single cycle. I'll have it without detection. And I'll leave my side streets with detection. Because the traffic is low, I don't want to every time keep interrupting north-south, only when I get demand from side streets. And I want even the signal timing uh, to be operational based on how high is the demand east-west. If the demand is not too high and I can serve my traffic with just minimum green times, that's perfect. I'll just operate yellow and then red after I satisfy my minimum. If uh, the demand is a little bit higher, I'll keep actuating or reading detections, extending every three seconds, or depending on the guideline in your city or uh, your jurisdiction, typically it's three seconds. <clears throat> I'll be checking for traffic and extending the signal accordingly until I see no detection and then I'll terminate it right away or until I reach my maximum. So that way you're saving much more time for north-south. So that's a semi-actuated semi signal. You can have detection in all left turns. You can remove detection in all left turns. That's up to you um, on the main phase. But on the side street, typically, it's it's fully on detection. The north-south pedestrians, typically, they are uh, put on something called pedestrian recall. And that means every single cycle, since phases two and six are operating their maximum every single cycle, I don't need to put a pedestrian push bottom for north-south. It will come up every single cycle. But I don't want to keep interrupting the main corridor every now and then unless there is real demand. So I'm going to add a push bottom for pedestrians so that the phase does not get actuated unless there is actual pedestrian demand for east-west. In an actuated signal, everything is based on detection, and that includes pedestrians. So you'll have pedestrian push bottom on every single corner for every side of the roadway. Is that good? All right, so we'll be doing a little bit of playing here. Um, if I'm telling you that um, I'm receiving, this is actually how you receive a signal timing plan from the city of Ottawa. Uh, what will happen is the city will show you what phases run together. So in this case, um, they have northbound through, southbound through, and they have the pedestrian phases running together with them. Uh, same thing applies. So basically in this case, uh, they have some notes as well that the eastbound left is prohibited during the peak AM and the peak PM, Monday to Friday. So you don't need to worry about it in your analyses because you're analyzing the uh, peak hour. So that's for the left turn. Same thing applies for the westbound left turn. Same thing applies for the southbound uh, right turn. So essentially, your right turns in the uh, north-south direction, there are, sorry, uh, left turns in the north-south direction, there are left turns, but they are not displayed here because they do not have their own phase. It's going to operate with the same phase as north-south. Is this clear? Here, it's telling you southbound right turn is prohibited during the uh, whole day, or actually from 7 a.m. all the way to 5.30 p.m. That's really not going to impact your ring barrier structure 
but will impact how you code your VASM so you don't allow uh, southbound right turns. We'll get to that when, of course, uh, we start modeling VSUM work. Um, again, uh, well, it's telling us even, I didn't read this uh, note until now, uh, northbound and southbound left turns are prohibited at all times. So in that case, you even have zero left turns during the peak, whether it's north-south or east-west. How would your ring barrier structure look like? Typically, in a ring barrier structure, a complete intersection with protected left turns would have the old numbers. But in this case, we are prohibiting left turns during the peak, so our analyses will not include them. That means those old numbers, old phases, will have to disappear. They will not be part of your ring barrier structure. Your ring barrier design will look like this. Phases two and eight in one side of the barrier, phases four and eight, sorry, two and six in one side of the barrier, two, four and eight in the other side. Any questions? All right. Now let's make it a little bit uh, more complex. If the eastbound left and northbound left, so eastbound left, which is in this case, as highlighted here, up directly laid in RBC with the same um, uh, ring battery design uh, of a typical intersection. Eastbound left, which is phase three in this case, is protected. So it will have to have its own phase, and that's why it has phase three. Northbound left is protected. It does have also its own dedicated phase. After they operate their green time, they will become fully red. They will not turn to a solid ball because I'm telling you they are protected left turn movements. Is this concept clear? A protected movement will have a green, yellow, and red, and then will terminate while through movements are east-west are operating. So you will not have to come in the middle of the intersection and wait for a gap. If I'm telling you the southbound left turn is permissive, which is typically, if, if it's a protected phase, it will have to have phase five. But when I'm telling you it's permissive, that means it will operate phase uh, two or under phase two, under a green ball. What that means, the vehicle that will be turning the southbound left will have to come to the middle of the intersection, wait here for a gap in through traffic, and then make sure there is no conflicting pedestrian before proceeding. If I'm telling you it's permissive, that means it's I don't have a protected component, and that means it disappears from my ring barrier uh, module. So I'm Xing it here. I'm telling you the westbound left is a protected permissive phase. What that means is the westbound left, phase seven here, is going to operate first as a solid green. So phase four and seven will go together, but, or can go together. And in this case, actually, since phase three is operating, um, uh, typically phase three and seven will go together. Phase three will terminate because it's protected, but phase seven, since it's protected permissive, it will change the indication from a green arrow to a yellow and then to a solid green ball that works with phase four. Is the concept clear? 